Manufacturing remains one of the key pillars for any economy and we are coming to you from the heart of all the representation of manufacturers. We'll be speaking to the CEO of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, Mrs. Phyllis Wakiaga, to get a sense of where we are as a country when it comes to our manufacturing agenda. But before we get into that discussion, let's take a look at her profile. Phyllis Wakiaga is a dynamic, transformational leader with a strong track record of over 15 years. Ms. Wakiaga is the Chief Executive of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers and is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya who holds a Master's in International Trade and Investment Law and a Master's in Business Management. She is an alumni of the Swedish Institute Management Program on Sustainable Business Leadership and Corporate Social Responsibility. Ms. Wakiaga is a UN Global Compact Network Kenya Chapter Board Chair Kenya Industrial Water Alliance Chair and a member of the Kenya COVID-19 Fund Board. She represents KAM in a number of institutions including Commerce Business Council, EAC Manufacturers Network, Anti-Counterfeit Agency and Anti-Illicit Trade Multi-Agency Forum amongst others. She was recognized as a top Africa economic leader for tomorrow by Choice L100 Africa List 2018 and one of the 2019 most influential people of the African decent Global 100 Under 40. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. First time on The Trading Bell. Welcome on board. Thanks, Abi. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Mm -hmm. And thank you for hosting us. And uh, Phyllis, uh, you have been at the forefront of promoting the manufacturing narrative for the country. And uh, we are coming into a new year. 2020 was seemingly not the best of years for not only Kenya, but across the world, mm -hmm. all linked to the coronavirus pandemic. Mm -hmm. From your assessment uh, of 2020, how mm -hmm. would you characterize the year that was? And uh, is there some light at the end of the tunnel come this new year? Uh, thanks for that. You're right that uh, 2020 was an unprecedented year. Yeah. We all started off in January with great plans and great ambitions, and then uh, the COVID uh, uh, pandemic uh, struck globally. And definitely that led to impacts uh, both in Kenya, in Africa and globally uh, for trade, for business, for investment. Sure. Uh, what we saw at the beginning was uh, at that time, China was pretty much on lockdown. So there was a slowdown in importation of raw materials and yeah. uh, that, that did uh, slow down production. And then we saw markets starting to close. Uh, so orders were cancelled in some sectors mm -hmm. and, and, that, and that was a challenge. Uh, what we did th though with our members as an association is we were determined to remain optimistic uh, through the year. So from very early on, in partnership with the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Enterprise Development, we were able to develop workplace protocols so that we keep Kenya moving. So we actually ran a campaign the whole year uh, just to urge our members to keep Kenya moving. Sure. Uh, if you noticed, we didn't experience shortages in, mm -hmm. in major commodities Correct. Uh, because we were able to get um, protocols in place at the workplace level, we were able to organize for movement permits mm -hmm. and manufacturers were able to continue with production uh, within the COVID uh, protocols. Uh, we recognize, of course, that COVID is first a health challenge uh, and uh, really uh, our condolences to those who've either lost loved ones or anything. Uh, but we also realize that it eventually has a ripple effect on the economy and the social fabric. So one of the other things uh, we did is uh, work closely with our members in the textile and apparel sector to also innovate and locally uh, produce the personal protective equipment. So this one was in partnership with the Equity Group Foundation where we kicked into action, brought the, the sector players together. Mm -hmm. We partnered with uh, different partners like Msingi, uh, the Manufacture Africa program being run by the then DFID, and were able to train uh, the manufacturers on the opportunities in this area. Sure. And we did see that local manufacturing happen locally. Right. So there was a mixed bag. Some sectors performed well uh, uh, during... 2020, some sectors struggled. All in all, manufacturing uh, contribution to GDP, you saw the quarter two and quarter three results, uh, negative 3.2, 3.9 respectively. Mm -hmm. So that's the mixed bag, but it, it just demonstrated that despite all this, uh, the sector is quite resilient 
and um, we worked on a resilience and sustainability report with KPMG All right. to also look at the opportunities within the crisis. And we identified about 76 good investment opportunities that can be exploited. All right. So a mixed we'll bag. Mixed bag indeed. Yes. We'll be coming to those 76 new strategies. Yes. And uh, Phyllis, I'd like to just mm. pick your mind on uh -huh. lo looking at the various sectors that uh, mm. were hard hit. Yes. Uh, could you just walk us through and uh, what does the situation look like right mm -hmm. now? Okay. So as I said, it was a mixed bag. So you did see the textile and apparel sector hit uh, from the angle of exportation. Mm -hmm. uh, under ago, a number of uh, orders were cancelled. Oh, yes. Uh, so people were not able to export under that sector. Uh, of course, because of the slowdown in purchasing power, Overall, a lot of sectors were not able to meet their targets. Mm -hmm. uh, probably uh, some of the ones that fared well, uh, surprisingly the building, mining and construction sector, those a lot of traction last year in terms of uh, activity locally. I think people sitting at home, you notice, hey, mm -hmm. I need to repair this, or yeah. I had this project that yeah. I need to expedite. Yeah. So that interestingly saw uh, some good traction last year. Interesting. Uh, the timber sector, some of the players we spoke to, uh, did see their businesses grow because also with the inability to bring in products mm -hmm. from out of the country, mm -hmm. some people had to uh, start sourcing locally. Okay. Uh, we also saw our horticulture members. Uh, I think you saw that exports in horticulture also grew uh, last year, mm -hmm. uh, which I think was very positive. So despite the challenge, exports grew. Um, uh, some sectors uh, did, did, did struggle uh, because of the reduced uh, uh, numbers okay. uh, locally from and also the purchasing power. All right. Yes. And uh, you've touched a very interesting aspect, uh, the purchasing power. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it possible to quantify how much we lost in 2020, year mm -hmm. uh, near comparison with 2020, uh, actually 2019? It's possible and po uh, chances are when the full Kenya National Bureau of Statistics report comes out for last year, because mm -hmm. they've released so far the first three quarters, we're yeah. also keenly waiting for quarter four mm -hmm. so that we go through the data and see what it's saying. Uh, in terms of uh, the changes. What was a good reprieve though was uh, some of the measures that government put in place and we must commend His Excellency uh, for coming through last year. Uh, and one of the ones that we thought was very impactful as a sector was the reduction of the pay as you earn mm -hmm. from 30 to 25 percent oh, because yes. Yes. it released money in mm -hmm. people's pockets for yeah. your own salary you could, yeah. you could feel in January when <laughs> it went back to normal. <laughs> So I think that really helped because yeah. people were able then to have at least a bit more money mm -hmm. uh, to spend and also the reduction of VAT from 16 uh, to 14%. Yes. And the good intention to have in place the credit guarantee scheme. Yes. I think those are some of the things we must say that were, were, were quite positive in, in assisting. The challenge with our stimulus uh, package was, however, it was very small because it was about 0.06% of our GDP. Correct. Uh, which for a quick recovery, that would be a challenge. All right. And uh, there was also the issue around the minimum tax, yes. uh, which uh, you've, you've already alluded to. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did this impact the industry? Uh, for minimum tax, uh, we will tell the impact this year, uh, because remember it was introduced uh, at some point last year mm -hmm. through, I think, the finance bill. And it's a 1% minimum tax on your gross turnover. So it's coming into effect from January, 2021 and uh, it starts coming into force from quarter one okay. so after the first quarter uh, by April I think the 20th of April mm -hmm. uh, the minimum tax is due okay uh, we are concerned about it though as an industry and we have expressed our concerns both to the legislature and the executive mm -hmm. uh, because of how the tax is structured yeah first of all the wording of gross turnover is is not very clear and for certain businesses you can imagine say an aviation business like KQ, their gross turnover would be pretty high, but it doesn't translate into actual profit. Sure. So our challenge is that the way it's currently defined, you would actually be paying tax on your losses. Um, we also find it a challenge for startup companies, because for startup companies, in many cases, many of them don't make profit in the first years of operation. Sure. So when you have a minimum tax that is taxed, as long as you're operating, whether or not you're making profit, uh, we think it's, 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 it's quite disadvantageous. And also for manufacturing firms who are benefiting from investment deduction allowances, 
Um, the reason people kept investing is because we had the investment deduction. Mm -hmm. And when you're having a deduction, you don't make a profit. So taxing the same person becomes punitive to an investor who invested in, 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 in good faith. Okay. So that and amongst other things are some of the challenges. And we are trying to still iron this out with the National Treasury and see if we can get a moratorium on this application as we uh, discuss some of these issues. All right. And uh, listening to you, clearly this uh, minimum tax would have far-reaching uh, ramifications than we thought of. It, it will, and I think we, it's not yet hit us that it will, because it, it will come into force in April. Oh, yes. Because, for example, for distribution chains, yeah. a lot of manufacturers operate through distributors, wholesalers, retailers, and each of them will have to have a 1% minimum tax. Yeah. So you can imagine the trickle-down effect is that at the end of the day, Monainchi will have more expensive products, or people will choose an, a, a route to market that doesn't take their product through too many levels and that what that means basically is that you lose jobs um, along along the chain so I think we need to really look at it um, see how we can fine-tune it uh, in other countries I know that uh, the government has been giving the example of India where it's 18 percent but it's 18 percent of your adjusted profits so it's not on your turnover and it's also there's a time period where oh, they yes. save your loss making for three years mm -hmm. or five years mm -hmm. and then you're required to pay but from year one, uh, Abby, you can imagine starting your company. Oh, yes. <laughs> and you I'm have to do returns. Thinking of the you start returns and, and you're uh, making a loss. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's a tax that I think we need to really look at mm. uh, because it will have long term consequences on, on, on the country. I get government that we want tax revenue yeah. and we continue to be committed to pay tax. If Remember you look at. There's a big four. <laughs> yeah, there's a big four. <laughs> if, if you look at. Um, our, uh, the tax contributions through corporate tax, mm -hmm. whether it's pay as you earn, value added tax, yeah. the county level we pay taxes and levies to different regulatory bodies. Yeah. If you holistically look at that and the fact that the sector is also creating jobs, opportunities, and not just manufacturing, because the thing about minimum tax also, it's not only manufacturing affected, it's mm -hmm. the entire economy. Mm -hmm. a, ca a company like KQ, for, the exa for example, if you take the tax as worded currently, they'll be required to pay about 1.67 billion mm -hmm. from their last year activities. Yeah. It's, it's not possible. If you look at tourism sector yes. that has been hard hit by the pandemic, they'll also be required to pay a 1% minimum tax. So we we genuinely need to have a conversation about this as, as a country because come April the effects will, will, will start to be felt and we are supportive of government and their intention to collect more tax uh, but we, we, we need to figure out how to do it in a way that doesn't have long-term ramifications on the economy. All right. Looking at uh, support, mm -hmm. uh, I remember Alibaba founder and chairman, yes. uh, Jack Ma, mm -hmm. uh, when the pandemic was at its peak, he did mention that uh, the biggest thing that we should look out for is to survive yeah. and to be alive post the pandemic. Yes. But uh, in equal measure, looking mm -hmm. at the businesses in Kenya, and, and like you rightly put it, mm -hmm. uh, quite a number of the startups uh, were really uh, hard hit some companies might never come back mm -hmm. some flourished during the pandemic mm -hmm. and uh, they they can only but smile all the way to the bank mm -hmm. and uh, i just want to hear from you as come mm -hmm. what are some of the uh, stories of resilience some mm -hmm. of the uh, support you've been uh, offering to businesses in mm -hmm. this uh, uncertain times um, yes, uh, 2020 was, was, was interesting because as we said first we had to deal with the health issues and the fact that we needed to put in place those support systems and uh, we did see the manufacturers come out and, and, and support as much as they could, donating water tanks and whatever they could. Sure. Um, the other thing is, as, as I said, we are running the Keep Kenya Moving campaign mm -hmm. and with the protocols that we put in place. Uh, with the support of the Ministry of, of Industry and also the work they did to unlock any challenges in terms of movement of goods really assisted the sector not to be as disrupted 
there are certain countries um, where this, their manufacturing sector got very disrupted because they had curfews, people were not able to work at night, yeah. there were no protocols in place. But for that one, I really must say that CS, uh, Betty Maina and her team, supported to ensure that we have as little disruption as possible mm -hmm. for what could continue uh, to, to be done. Um, the other thing is, uh, as you mentioned, SMEs are uh, probably the most hard hit uh, yes. by this pandemic uh, because of, of, of the nature of the businesses, uh, their size and everything. But we did see people pivot uh, during uh, the COVID pandemic. We saw SMEs come up with new innovative products. Sure. Uh, we saw SMEs um, get into new markets, especially using e-commerce. Um, a lot of the SMEs were able to then use a route to market that would be even using your Instagram page, mm -hmm. going into an e-commerce platform, oh, yes. uh, setting up your page, and, mm -hmm. and that saw them also uh, go, through, go through the year uh, significantly. As an association we run, a, we have a manufacturing academy, so we offered capacity building and training uh, in different areas where we were looking at helping people on their cash flow and, 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 and other issues um, that would help them navigate uh, the year. And that, that was uh, quite useful uh, to, to, to the sector. As a manufacturing uh, pillar under the Big Four agenda, mm -hmm. there's been a clarion call for Buy Kenya, Build Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is sort of a new lifeline mm -hmm. to most mm -hmm. of the manufacturers in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen uh, a couple of brands uh, having a, a big uh, uh, flow to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, from your assessment, uh, are we seeing more Kenyans embracing Kenyan-made products? And are we giving value for money? What I think one of the things the pandemic taught us is the need to be more self-reliant as economies. Uh, at the point where we had lockdowns, I mean, we had uh, the inability to move goods around the world, it demonstrated that there's going to be a shift in the global supply chains. And uh, some of the shifts would work in the favor of the African continent because, of course, uh, people would want to diversify where they source their products from. So the need for buy Kenya, build Kenya, or buy East Africa, or buy Africa, that clarion call to support local content, I think, is one of the things that will lead us to building supply chains that are more resilient and more diverse. Uh, one of the things we have seen is that the interest and the uptake uh, for local products is uh, starting to increase. Uh, for example, for the local textile and apparel sector, you've seen even the president himself becoming a champion of uh, Made in Kenya. And mm -hmm. uh, we've had a number of partnerships to just drive up that agenda. We've recently started something with Kepro and the Kenya Fashion Council. But beyond that, if you look at other sectors, building and construction and other sectors, we've also had discussions with uh, the different ministries on how this can be uh, grown. Government being the biggest buyer is one of uh, our sources uh, of, of this Buy Kenya, Build Kenya agenda. And last year there was a list of almost 375 products mm -hmm. that are made locally and available in abundance. And this list was gazetted for priority to be given for government procurement for these products. So I think that's a positive move. And then what we're also seeing amongst ourselves as businesses, can we buy more from each other? Uh, for manufacturers, can you work more with the SMEs? Can you subcontract? Can you build more uh, supply chains locally. So I think that clarion call is, is, is critical. Uh, what we need to fix though, uh, you asked about 2021, is the issues that we have raised in our manufacturing priority agenda that we, we, we released last week. We still need to address the issue of competitiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, we had, we've been having discussions with UNIDO, their competitiveness index uh, that comes out every two years. The 2021 Kenya's ranking was 115 out of almost 150 countries. And from their index, it has been seeing a decline in Kenya's competitiveness for manufacturing. Uh, so I think we can't run away from the fact that we need to fix competitiveness, which is really the cost of production, the regulations in the country, um, how quickly we move our goods through the port. Mm -hmm. Because even logistics are an area that adds to the cost. Sure. So that whole competitiveness bucket is something we need to address. Mm -hmm. We also need to look at uh, markets, uh, which is the second priority in our manufacturing priority agenda. And uh, the AFCT, I think, is one of the low-lying fruits as we finalize the details of uh, the rules of origin and the other trading uh, details, um, positioning ourselves as a manufacturing hub for Africa. 
and that still takes us back to fixing our cost of production locally mm -hmm. so that we see more people locating here for the African market. Um, then the issue of predictable and stable policy environment is our third agenda. And this one is really saying our regulatory frameworks, the duplication, can we relook at that and see how we can support manufacturing and business uh, generally to operate more efficiently. Then we have the issue of SME development as our fourth agenda. And the fifth one is about the sustainability and resilience of the sector, which is skills development, the green growth um, of the sector, and also looking at government expenditure. Um, I think we all know mm -hmm. the story of our public debt, our oh, spending. Yes. Um, the need for us to relook really at how we are spending as, 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 a, as a country and cutting our coat according to our cloth. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the headline is oh, <laughs> talking yes. about today yeah. with, with IMF in town. All right, very uh, heavy issues you've captured there, uh, Phyllis. And uh, perhaps as we close, um, we are staring at a very uh, interesting year. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a build-up to an election year. Yes. Uh, over and above that, there are political undertones currently mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. where we are pursuing a constitutional amendment as a country. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the biggest conversations is uh, mm -hmm. the investor community usually gets a bit uh, jittery mm -hmm. any time the political noise is too high. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you feel uh, this might have an impact on how the momentum that we are currently enjoying Will this be disrupted? And uh, mm -hmm. over and above that, uh, in, in a way of closing, would you also just give us your outlook for 2021 mm -hmm. and, and Kenya's uh, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, narrative? Governance, I think, is at the bedrock of any developing uh, or any even developed society. So we can't run away from the fact that at every given time we have to have conversations around how we are governed, the structure of our governance, the operationalization yeah. of a constitution and other things that really are at the heart of uh, development of, of, of a country. Uh, what we sometimes get jittery about as, 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 as industry is when these uh, conversations lead to disruption in, 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 in the business environment. There are many countries where you can hold an election and walk to work. Oh, yes. But <laughs> what we've seen <laughs> in our country is that when there are political undertones, sometimes it leads to tensions mm -hmm. that uh, then escalate to, to sometimes even loss of life and other things. Correct. So, of course, that's not an environment that eventually leads to investment in the country or gives that stability. And, and because of that, we've always had the five-year cycle where every five years people slow down, take a back seat, see how things will go and then continue. So yeah. that start and stop, start and stop mm -hmm. for an economy mm -hmm. uh, might not be the best. For developing economies, they'll hold their elections and life will, life will continue. Will back to normal. Yes, so what we would like to see more is um, that even as we have these dialogues, which we must have as a country, we do them in a, in a way that con helps us and our citizens to continue to produce and uh, create a livelihood for themselves. Okay. Uh, we also do them in a way that is issue-based and, uh, and, and, and doesn't generate to ethnic tensions or other things that are very negative uh, for this country. So we uh, are keen to see how the year goes. Mm -hmm. And as you said, we have this year with uh, the constitutional amendments, next year as an election year. Yeah. Um, so as long as we have these conversations in a way that uh, ensures that this political uh, peace and stability in the country, mm -hmm. it's, it's good for any economy to, to, to do that. Okay. Uh, because at the end of the day, governance does drive uh, mm -hmm. development. You can't uh, remove the two. They are not separate conversations. Sure. It's a political economy yeah. and, and all that. Outlook for 2021, um, a, a year of recovery, a year of uh, exploiting opportunities that uh, have been identified and that exist a year of uh, supporting SMEs uh, to recover and, and uh, go through the pandemic, a year of looking for um, investment capital. Um, and I think things like the credit guarantee scheme will come in handy for SMEs, but also the conversation we are having with the Capital uh, Markets Authority right. and, and the National Nairobi Securities Exchange. I think those are some of the things that give us room to say how do we really look at how we capitalize our businesses mm -hmm. can we see more manufacturing firms uh, starting to list at the stock exchange can the inuka program support smes to be able to 
uh, grow their businesses, mm -hmm. uh, build governance, and make strong institutions that can eventually be listed in the stock exchange. Okay. So I see a, a year of collaboration, uh, and we remain optimistic uh, despite the the still uncertainty uh, oh, yes. forward, mm -hmm. and we are keen to drive uh, the priority agenda for manufacturing, and also as we move into an election year to shape the dialogue around issue issue based uh, discussions mm -hmm. that really transform the lives of our citizens, create opportunities for all, and okay. uh, address the issues that really plague us as a society. Excellent. Well, we've been speaking there to Felix Wakiaga, the Chief Executive Officer of Kenya Association of Manufacturers, saying it as she sees it. And quite uh, interesting uh, discussion there where she's saying it's going to be a year of recovery, a year of rebuilding, a year that will redefine Kenya's place in the economic space around Africa. Well, that's all the time we had here for you on this week's episode of The Trading Bell. My name is Abegina. Until next time, keep safe.